Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be about a quimpotential bonding grid. This is an existing pool that's about approximately 30 years old. And my customer called me on a Thursday, probably the second or third week of July, that she was tearing up this concrete and some of the equipotential bonding grid had either uh, corroded and had been undone or broke accidentally when they tore up the concrete. So I was there to make their repairs and um, that's what this video will be about. Uh, in a nutshell, what we need to do with an in-ground pool or an above-ground pool is we need to bond each of the metal parts at the pool, especially like the handrails, for instance, the light, uh, the pool light, there's the handrail holders right there. I was wondering where the handrails were, but anyway, uh, anything within five feet of the outside walls of those pools needs to be bonded to this equipotential bonding grid. And then, of course, the bonding grid terminates over at the pool pump motor inside this, uh, inside this uh, equipment, fenced-off equipment area here. And so I was there to make sure that I had bonded the, um, the gas-powered heater, and I did. Hey, I'm in Point Pleasant this morning. It's Saturday. It's about 10, 15 a.m. I just got back from getting all my materials. I got a call to do this job maybe on like Thursday. They were ripping up the concrete, as you can see, around this pool to put in pavers. It's about 30 years old. And uh, they discovered that the equipotential bonding grid had come undone. It wasn't done in certain places. There's going to be metal railings going into the pool. So we're here today to update the equipotential bonding grid. And uh, <clears throat> wish me luck because it's super hot. I'm very sweaty already. It's not, I haven't even really started working yet. And uh, fortunately, I got this tree right here that's blocking a lot of the sun, giving me some shade and some relief. Uh, but that's not going to be like that all day. So um, thanks for watching this video. And I hope you learned something and hope you enjoy this. And we'll see you on the other side. As you can see here, this, this green wire that goes around the pool, anything on an in-ground pool got to be bonded, all right? So this is a steel support, and then it gets broken up right here. So we'll need to bond this piece and this piece. And what we'll do is we'll run this new wire all the way around the pool. <clears throat> of course, that's for the lighting. That gets a bond as well. So we're going to install all new wiring except where... The old wire and it still suffice, which isn't in too many places. We'll drill some new holes to mount um, <clears throat> some grounding lugs to attach our wire to. There'll be a uh, an entry an entry into the pool right here. So these two holders for the uh, for the railing will get bonded. As you can see, there's a screw on the side we're going to use to attach our lug. And as you can see there, this one came undone. See, so that's why we're here. Right, that should be attached to that so we can't get current to flow on that steel support. So that's the that's why we have an equipotential bonding grid. Then of course there'll be a railing here. So we'll have to pick up those two. And then a railing here. We'll have to pick up those two. And then it goes all the way back to the swimming pool equipment, which is here, and gets attached to that lug. The reason why we use stainless steel here is that stainless steel is going to resist rust and corrosion. So that's why we use stainless steel hardware around the pool, anywhere around an ocean or if you're close to the ocean. I just keep an array of stainless steel hardware on my truck now just to accomplish this and do the job right the first time. These two things here are the handrail holders. So they come with a stainless steel, stainless steel, I don't know, maybe a 1024 screw. So we just attach. A, uh, a direct burial grounding lug directly to it with that screw and uh, that's how we electrically bond the handrails in the swimming pool the 
what I'm doing here is I'm drilling a hole, probably a quarter inch thick, and then I'm using the stainless steel, as mentioned before, uh, a nut and bolt assembly to attach this grounding lug to the steel. And then once I attach the equipotential bonding grid number eight solid wire, that steel becomes a part of the grounding system by way of this lug and obviously the grounding conductor. Here you could use a tap and thread tool and thread the bolt in, but that's not what we did this time. Obviously it's important to get this right and to have a solid grounding system here. Uh, Cause God forbid anything were to become live such as that water, if everything's grounded correctly, the circuit breaker will trip right away, instantaneously, the speed of light. And so what we're trying to achieve here is a solid path for ground fault current to flow back to the source, which would be the transformer from the utility company out on the street. Once that excessive current goes through the transformer, it comes back into the house and it opens up that circuit breaker, freeing that ground fault current and interrupting the circuit so that nobody gets hurt or God forbid killed. That's the purpose of grounding and that's the purpose of this equipped potential bonding grid installation. Extending portions of the quick potential bonding grid is permitted by the code as long as you use split bolt connectors that are rated for direct use and rated for the two conductors that we're putting under them. If you do more than two conductors under this particular split bolt, that would be a violation because the manufacturer did not design that split bolt for more than two conductors. So that's why I had to use several conductors including extending the one to the left right there, which goes down to the pool light that absolutely needs to be reconnected to this grounding, to this bonding grid. If you have any questions, of course, just leave them in the comments and um, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions there.
I guess I should say when this put potential, this number eight org goes back to the pool pump, the motor, and gets terminated at that lug, at that point it becomes bonded to the equipment grounding conductor of the circuit supplying power to that pool pump. I hope you can understand that. Uh, so that's why we're running all this wire to prevent obviously electrical shock and a way to clear of ground fault should one occur. That's the purpose of all this grounding and picking up all these metal parts. Anything that can conduct electricity can shock and kill you. So what we want to do is we want to ground that or bond that uh, so we have a path to be able to clear the fault. Anyway, so I went around to the rest of the pool. I don't know, it's probably maybe 10 or 12 different locations. Like I said, this job was done back in July. Um, and when I went back there at the beginning of the video, you could, you could see the net of the uh, handrails were up. So I don't know if that's a seasonal thing or if they didn't have them in time. Because normally you don't take those down, you leave those up, I think. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, that's why I make these videos so people can understand why uh, this quick potential bonding grid um, is required and what it does and its purpose and why it's so important. Yeah, you see, there is the fence that I'm grounding. I put a lug to that because I believe that was within five feet of the edge of the pool water. And when I went back, the pool that fence was gone. Oh good. What you got in here? A couple of timers, a couple of circuits. To work those circuits, the timers, everything's off. Hey guys, I just wanted to point out one thing with that um, with that control box. It's got the circuit breakers and the two timers. You may have noticed there's no GFCI protection um, in there. But there is a GFCI right beside that panel. Uh, the reason why there's no GFCI protection is that's a double pole motor. And years ago when this pool was installed, it wasn't required. Nowadays, they are GFCI required, whether it's 120 volts or if it's 240 volts. But if it's existing and it's been working like that for years, we left it until there's an issue. If you have any questions about that, make sure you leave those in the, in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching these videos and liking them, subscribing. I've, I've reached over 2,100 subscribers now. Very excited about that. So that means you guys like this content. And I'm very appreciative of all of you uh, who have subscribed and watch these, these videos routinely. So um, just wanted to say thank you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thanks.